How long from the first visit to sale? Using the conversion path length, we can answer how many touches on average occur before your customers convert. What we're looking at here is anyone who made a purchase in the last 30 days using the e-commerce transaction as our conversion metric. We can see that just 53% of all traffic had a single touch point and then purchased. That means that nearly half of all the traffic had two or more touches and actually contributed just over half of the revenue. Therefore, if this were your business, using the default analytics last click model, you would be misattributing a significant portion of your revenue to the wrong channels. Worse still, around half of your channel attribution would be wrong, and so your assumptions about what's working and what isn't would be wrong too. We can fix that, but first let's grab some more detail using the time lag report. In the time lag report, you can see how many days on average it takes between the first visit and the final conversion. Again, we're looking at the last 30 days here. This distribution tab is telling us 72% of our conversions happen essentially in the same day. Then we can see that the other remaining 28% or so are spread out over the two to 30 days time period with 14% actually occurring between the longer 12 to 30 date range. 14 and a half percent of revenue arrives 12 to 30 days after the first visit. It's not massive in isolation, but it's a decent chunk over time. One thing to remember is that your path length, which is the previous report we looked at, is looking at the touches in total, whereas time lag is in days. So in theory, someone could have many touches in one day, hence the time lag of zero, uh, i.e. within 24 hours. And this total number of people is higher than the single path length, which if you recall was around about 50%. So simply put, people can have many paths in a given day, of course, so they could visit via social media and then come back direct or even organic and so on. So we're starting to build a picture uh, of time and touches and, and the channels. Let's um, start looking at how many channels it takes to convert. One of the more visually interesting reports in your multi-channel funnels is the top conversion paths. Now I keep throwing caveats at you because there are lots of things to point out. This report is useful for visualizing your paths, but also it becomes less useful and nearly redundant once you start to see large mixed path lengths. The reason being is you can't control or reproduce large path lengths. Those are at, at the whim of your website visitor. So avoid looking at every single path in isolation and remember we're after trends, not the minute detail of each and every conversion you have. Right. Back to it. If you've come straight to this report, then the default path length will be two touches or more, essentially assisted conversion paths. I've got it set to all, so we can see single touch points too. By default, this report is showing you all of your channels. We can search for specific channels such as paid, and we can see how many times paid was present and paid led to a conversion. From a top level perspective, we can see that paid search has driven 1,654 conversions and the value of those sales. Here paid paths account for 36.6% of revenue in this time period. Notice in this example at number three, organic is actually the last touch, but the paid search was the first. This actually happened 93 times. So in Google Analytics by default, the organic traffic would have taken 100% credit for all that revenue. What's interesting here is that you have the ability to also drill all the way down to the keyword level to understand how your campaigns work together with other traffic sources. We can add a secondary dimension such as the campaign, keyword, ad content, or any other attribution parameter that exists in your AdWords or your campaign tagging. 
as described in the UTM creator section earlier. For now, let's add the campaigns as a secondary dimension. Now we're seeing how each campaign works with other channels. And although I've had to obscure this live data, uh, behind the blur at the sixth position is a brand campaign. That is driving 34 organic conversions in this 30 day period. You will often find this a brand campaign is not a waste of money or just about protecting your position on uh, Google search. The brand campaigns actually assist a lot of other traffic channels. You can now see why attribution is so important, and I keep saying that. Um, this is one of a few areas in analytics where we can really see visually these campaigns working together and how last click conversions are being countered. We can go to the assisted conversions report to see what the actual conversion value is when it's split into linear attribution. Uh, remember when I shouted out that caveat at the start of this um, section of the training about the multi-channel funnels reports all using linear attribution. So that's what we're looking at here, just to remind you. Uh, you can also see what that looks like versus your default last click or the direct conversion model. So you can compare it and break away from the linear. The far right column is essentially correlation. And to be honest, it's one of the simplest ways of looking at your attribution with a, a score close to zero, meaning that this channel functioned primarily as the final conversion. Uh, a value closer to one indicates the channel functioned equally in a assist role and as the final conversion interaction. And a value higher than one indicates a more supporting role as seen here in the example with email marketing. So just to reiterate that, a score close to zero or naught means the channel functioned as the final conversion. Uh, a value closer to one indicates that it was in balance between final conversion and assisted. And then a value over one is more of assisted role. So that's a, a very simple indicator and correlation of your, your attribution. Now, when it comes to attribution, we could actually stop here. There's enough to get you close or more than just started to understanding your, your traffic channels. So if you're feeling somewhat overwhelmed, then open up your own analytics and watch the videos back through side by side. To get yourself used to multi-channel funnels, start looking at uh, months of the year and taking notes. What's your path length and time lag look like over the year for your business? How have your assisted channels changed with time? What positives and negatives can you find in your data? What big changes can you see in your channels? Then consider what changes you've made to your business and more importantly, what, what you've changed in your marketing over that time as well. Perhaps grab yourself a coffee or uh, three uh, and just go back over this section of the course and just start digging through your analytics just to get comfortable with the, with the paths and the lag and the linear attribution seen here in the multi-channel funnels. Catch you on the other side.